Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, this is the press. We're reaching you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. And now we've been joined by our guest, Habib Gajo, a policy analyst, to analyze some of the headlines we've just read out to you. And our phone lines are now open for you to call in and also join the conversation. You're welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. Alhamdulillah. And thank you for coming. You're uh, so there are lots of stories on the national dailies for today but i'm mm. sure what has been hitting every nigerian has actually also touched you how you get in feel and what's what's the difference for you like well uh really it uh, it hits nigeria so much but let me put it in this way uh Tunumbu and uh, Tunumbu subsidy and uh, political Subsid uh, subsidy and the undertone. So you're saying it. that the subsidy is a Tinubu subsidy and it has a political undertone? Uh, yeah. Please ex uh, expand <laughs> it, yes. Um, first of all, Nigerians are all aware about subsidy. Yes. All the presidential candidates that appeared before Nigerians in a town hall meetings and debates okay has agreed to remove subsidy, subsidy. some even expatiate how they would remove it in stages you understand mm -hmm. but having that tunumbu has not participated in any town hall mm -hmm. and uh, any debate so and he's the one that is announcing the removal. <laughs> you understand? Mm. <laughs> so definitely. Uh, well, I think his manifesto made it clear. Uh, you know, I, I I don't believe in in manifestos of uh, uh, of a candidate in Nigeria. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because they hire consultant to 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 write for them, and they wrote a bogus. Uh, uh, manifesto like 80 to 100 and something pages um, they will now say they, we have manifesto the manifesto that the, even them have not right, let's, let's take this call before we talk more on that hello good morning. good morning tell us your name and where you're calling from you're welcome to the press i'm calling from Venezuela. all right please join the conversation collins uh, like uh, the analyst was saying, if you look at this subsidy issue of a thing, it's a crime against the entire nation. You see, I, normally I never liked Tinubu. Then he has acted just like a military man. Mm. That's why the fact that we are buying this way at this high rate now, what we are looking up to is the benefit at the other end. If you look to it now, from the initial stage, the Philly station, they have the fuel they, re they refuse to sell. So we are selling 700, so we are selling 650, so we are selling 600. But now, the normal rate now, we are buying it at the rate of 540, 530, 525. We are okay like that. What I'm saying, let's just concern the benefit is this. Like, Labour Party, they are complaining that they are going to raise the, the salary structure from 200,000 or above. Labour Congress, yes. To my only two understanding, it happens that all these, if you look at all the whole state now, there are so many ethnic groups that they are marginalized. If the creation of state that they have been contemplating on where they, they we, are, we are saying that there is no money, there is no this, there is no that, if God has paved way that if you can begin to earn something from one side of the of the of the of the of the situation or something of that nature why don't they come together and agree as issue of that state creation it will benefit both the masses the nation at large all right thank you thank you very much <laughs> hmm. you heard his opinion yeah but i think that's more like what the um, president did yesterday when he called the governors together to have a meeting yeah, you know, uh, like I said, uh, it's only Tunumbu that did not tell Nigerians how I will remove the subsidy. Okay. What 
mechanism I will put in place. You understand? Absolutely. Unlike the other uh, uh, other presidential candidates that went to town hall meetings and debate, uh, how because they were some are asked, how are you going to uh, generate money and how are you going to fund uh, your economy? Some said, I will privatize the refineries. I will get $100 billion and it's enough for me to take off. Uh, the other candidate, uh, Peter Obi, uh, is the, the most interesting uh, part of uh, the Labour Party is Peter Obi said he's going to remove subsidy immediately he was sworn in. And that's what exactly Tunubu did. And Peter Obi did not tell Nigerians that how is he going to remove it and how is he going to sustain the economy? He okay. mentioned 50-50. But be aware that Labour, Labour Congress are against the removal of subsidy right from inception. Of course. Up till today, they have not, they, are, they stand by the subsidy, not outright removal. Because the first stage was removed by uh, Obasanjo administration. The second uh, steps were also removed by uh, the same administration, uh, Obasanjo administration. The third phase is where they privatize or uh, the the terminology they use outright sale for the refineries you understand of course that led Eradua to cancel the the agreement and now issued a, a, a license for them to go and uh, have a, uh, a fix a refinery you understand it's one of the agreement between the labor and the government of uh, uh, Umar Musa Radua okay. that the government will uh, 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 maintain and uh, rehabilitate and maintain the, the, the refineries so that they can produce as much as like 40 percent then the marketers will have like 60 percent okay you understand Absolutely. so it will reduce the cost diesel was deregulated okay. kerosene was deregulated but who are benefiting from uh, uh, yes. even 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 uh, uh, um, aviation fuel was also deregulated, deregulated. so okay. it's only pms now remain with us yes. but when you look at the when you look at the whole situation you deregulate uh, uh, pms uh, um, kerosene and uh, 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 diesel. All right. Hello. Yes, sir. Let's quickly take this call. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Good morning. Ma. Welcome to the press. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. From oh, where? All right. Your name, please. Hello. We can hear you. I think we lost that. But so the 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 manufacturing companies the 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 industries and uh, corporate organization they use diesel our trucks use diesel for so the logistics of good, good, uh, good and services mm -hmm. you understand yes then the subsidy is also uh, also has to go but the, the issue is you have to put you have to bring something to the table for the ordinary Nigerians because Before I will not you call. Can do that. Yes. All right. Let's take this call. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. I don't know. I think the phone lines are jammed, um, but you can still keep trying. But um, another so, th uh, yeah. thing I wanted to draw your attention yeah. to is the fact that Tinubu's in his inaugural speech said, "Subsidy is gone." Those were his words, verbatim. He did not That's say that's subsidy. I have removed God. subsidy. And do not no, he didn't there was no he didn't say that for subsidy he, longer he, than June. He didn't say I remove. 
Exactly. He said subsidy has gone because the previous government has already removed it. Thank you. But because you're calling it Tinubu subsidy, that's what I'm trying to get. That's the point I'm trying to get. But before you explain that in details, let's quickly take this call. Hello, good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to the press. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Are oh, you there? All right, your name, please. You need to turn down the volume of your TV set so we can communicate properly. Oh, All right, please tell us your name. John. All right, go ahead and join the conversation. John. Please turn down the volume of your TV set and join the discussion. Okay. Hello, good morning. Please turn down the volume of your TV set and join the discussion. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning, you're welcome to the first. Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Uh, or oh, step away from it. Uh, Alright, please step away from your TV uh, set. Yes, I want to, I want to, I want to remind your, your guest. Yes, sir. Is it okay? Very well, we can hear you. Very well. Uh, I want to, I want to remind your guest. You should just go straight to the point what you ask him to explain, not going by whether Tinubu subsidy or not. Just go to the point and say something on your own view, not criticizing the president. Criticizing the 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 that will, uh, that, that will gain uh, 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 something positive from it. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I was actually telling you earlier that the, this, um, he, his words were just three. Subsidy is gone. Bearing in mind that Boris administration did not make appropriation for subsidy longer than June. So in this case, why the uproar that Somebody's bringing it to the notice of Nigerians that June, this is the reality. June or July. I think it's July. Well, 30th of June. Now, uh, you see, one of the reasons why uh, we are stuck in this whole situation is a political gimmick they are playing with Nigerians. Okay, please and, and with the Labour Party. Okay. You understand? Being that I said uh, Tunumbu subsidy is because he the one that announced oh. not the previous government. So you're giving it to you him understand? the tag. Okay. So now the backlash is is the political undertone. So what's the political undertone that you see or you can perceive? The political undertone is there is so many uh, 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 politics in this matter. You see, sometimes when you when you listen to what leaders are saying, you can ex extract something. The undertone is the way they politicize the subsidy uh, 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 removal. Some agree, some di dis uh, disagree, and so on. Now, when you look at those who are negotiating, f negotiating for the uh, government side and the labor side, you see both are playing politics with it. Why do you say they are In playing politics? If labor is actually asking for. I think um, Labour is insisting that refineries must be renovated. So then they are asking for two hundred thousand on the least for minimum wage. So is that playing politics in any way? Uh, uh, you see, the first, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what Labour did, the first stage is to issue a ultimatum that status quo 
the government should revert to the status quo before they come to the table yes. for negotiation. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the government now set up a committee to go and listen to the grievances of the organized level. So the TUC went, so many of them went, and they proposed. What Nigerians want is not palliative that will not sustain the, econo the economy or uh, sustain the ordinary Nigerian who is uh, uh, doing his own business or, uh, or his uh, work. Before I ask you what you suggest, let's quickly take this call. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the press. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Are you there? I think we lost that caller. You said what well, Nigerians want is not palliative. It's, it's, it's not palliative. Th that won't sustain the economy. If yes. I'm right. So, wh what do you now, think? Now, the palliative is, is 5,000. How they much? Not, they've not said what they're going to do. They're still holding meetings, next yeah. meetings, to discuss according, how what's going to be done with the according to According to the statistics, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, arithmetic is when you have, uh, uh, when you borrow $180 million to to fund the subsidy palliative. $800 million. $800 million. Yes, sir. I think it's 801. Yes. You, you understand? Yes, so sir. So when you divide it to 40 million Nigerians that are buying fuel in their cars, or six, you now arrive at 55,000. <laughs> you understand? I will, I will have listened to, 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 the, to the speaker. But the issue is now, you see, the, polit the, po the politicians are playing with this uh, 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 subsidy removal lightly, but they don't know it is it's far beyond what they thought or what they they are thinking. Okay. In, yes. Now, let me let me ask you. If an NPC is now liabilitated company like any other company in Nigeria and went ahead, immediately the president announced the departure of uh, subsidy. MNPC issued a statement and changed their pump price some say within 24 hours, some said immediately in some state, immediately. Now, how can an NPC, a, a, a limited company, will fix price for Nigerians? Well, they actually didn't fix price for Nigerians. They fixed, they fixed their own fuel price as oil marketers. They, because now every other person, it's like then, it's, the, the door has been thrown open. Then in whose interest? Nigerians buy at the rates they can the buy. Said it's no. not going to you start see, you see, showing market you realities. It's showing market realities. And who is now who is on the crossroad? Or uh, on the crossroad? It's the government. They should allow government to discuss because uh, 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 the previous government of Muhammad Buhari that removed the subsidy has already sat with the logo and agreed on some certain conditions before the end of June to terminate the subsidy. Okay. Now, the meeting was not, did not take place. Nobody was discussed. All of a sudden, in a speech, the president now uh, announced it to Nigerians. And now, when you come back to to the another part of it, the way the, the reason why I'm saying that uh, they are, they are playing with with it uh, like a game, the vice president 
Kashi Shatima in his own speech or in his own interview with the uh, media. He said few rich people, few Nigerians are the one benefiting or are the one that committing all this kind of fraud. The, people, the reason why Nigerians are saying the, the subsidies is scam is a fraud. So the few Nigerians, are they above the government? Are they powerful than than the government? You know, uh, so they need to bring them because of up to statements. now, up to now, no Nigerian knows who are those people. Because of the statements you made, I think um, Tonya Cole, the presidential candidate of the APC in River State, is also an oil expert, oil and gas expert. He was also making a statement. He said, "Subsidy is not benefiting Nigerians in any way. Yes, rather, it's benefiting a few set of people times six, like six times benefits to them." So I don't think that the statements coming from um, Vice President Kashim Shatima is like a new thing. The it's more like the reality that has been is before us. And that's the more reason why the subsidy has to be removed. Who are those people that are more powerful than them? But Mr. Gadja, I'm going to ask you a personal <laughs> question. Do you support this subsidy removal or not? Yeah, so I support the removal of the subsidy, but in a arranged uh, in an organized manner what's your idea of organized manner the idea of organized manner is let the stakeholders the marketers and the uh, uh, the government the stakeholders and uh, nigeria labor congress let them come to table and fashion out how this subsidy will be a reality Okay. Now. Before the removal or while it's at it now, they can actually now have that meeting. It has gone, it has gone. Yes. In your you understand? Yes. Now, they should focus on who determine the price. Okay. Is it the market force that will determine the price? Or there is some certain arrangement that will follow... Uh, 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 that subsidy, uh, uh, the subsidy removal. For example, now, a Lagos state can sell at the rate of two hundred to three hundred. Mm -hmm. You understand? Bec yes, I do. Because of the proximity, the ships yes. dock at uh, Patakot also. You understand? Yes. But when you are bridging it to to the other state how much it will cost okay you understand yes. let's have a price control in the market all right you understand yes the government cannot be necessarily be uh, the one that uh, uh, um, put the price but they can regulate the market. Okay. You, you understand? Well, then, I, I think I heard Iman President talking yesterday, Okoronko, he was saying that um, now it will be easier. They are supporting fuel subsidy, fuel subsidy removal. So it will be easier for all marketers to just, you know, throw their caps into the wing. Actually, everybody buys and sells. You know, there will be competition in the market. So at that point, I don't think government can come out and start doing a regulation. Just like you want to buy Gary today, this is the price of Gary. You don't expect government to come and give you the price for Gary because you bought at a rate. After the production and everything, this is the rate you're selling. Don't you think that's the best thing? Let's go to the advanced level of it. Okay. Now, foreign exchange. The window is open. Yes. We have how many price? How many dual, pri dual prices? Even the central bank today mm. cannot fix cannot tell you the real price of dollar in the market everybody yes. has his own price the Very bank well. has their own the bdc's have their own the so-called uh, parallel market have their own the government has so many prices in their windows then that that is why the foreign exchange keep rising and rising and rising there is no regulation. That's what we are saying. Okay. Let 
let key stakeholders and this is something that affects the economy and the economy is the is is is, is the life of the the nation you understand yes and any country that don't have uh, 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 security and uh, economic capability definitely you know uh, the country is in in, 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 in a mess. All right, because so you talked about economic capabilities, there's this um, headline on the Daily Sun that says FG plans earn as you work pay policy. FG plans earn as you work pay policy says number of hours in office, quality of work will determine remuneration. What do you think? How do you think that would impact our economy? Yeah, uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I don't know because the the economy will not support uh, uh, pay as you go, uh, pay as you, you as you are tired. You think won't support it? Yes. But other firms do that. Uh, yes, because they have a stable economy. Okay. For example, now, a price of a commodity in in UK or America or in any other developed countries has not change for the past 10 to 20 years you understand yes uh, then you, you come to nigeria the price of uh, uh, commodity change every day and uh, you said you want to pay as time then how uh, how can how can you survive it's difficult, right. it's difficult, it's difficult, it's difficult, the, the, the economy is just a suggestion. Okay. You understand? Let them fix the economy first. Okay. Then they will now look for other uh, modalities or innovation they want to bring into the uh, right. system. In, in 60 seconds, how would you rate this administration so far? Uh, it's too early to assess. One. Secondly, uh, the level of insecurity has risen to some certain level that we are not comfortable with uh, right. because before the election we during the campaign and the election there was no attack but All after right. election and things it's change okay. again so Thank we, we need to to put our the government need to put uh, the security as one of the yeah, forefront front to the economy. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Aviv Gajo. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. We wish you had all the time in the world, but thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. All right, <laughs> viewers, let's go on a quick break when we return. Another guest joins us shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back, viewers. This is Still the Press. And now we've been joined by Honorable Suraj Sunusi Abubakar, who is the former aspirant APC Zona Organizing Secretary Northwest. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Thank you too for coming. All right, so there's been a lot of uproar with the tenth National Assembly and the zoning. Yeah. But the question is, why is why are some of the uh, party members not in support of the zoning to the south south? It is obvious and clear. It is based on their personal interests. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Nigeria is a big country, and uh, Nigeria is a very diverse country, and. Uh, if you look at the situation right from the inception of democracy, uh, as we have different ethnic group, a lot of people are feeling marginalized. Okay. Yeah, so which according to the Constitution sec section 14 of the Nigerian Constitution, I think is very clear that no religion, tribe, or any group should feel marginalized. Okay. So in that case... That's in this case... Okay. Zoning arrangement, whether we like it or not, must be considered. So you mean zoning based ahead on of equity. based on equity. Based so on equity. in that case, yes. you're proposing a Tajudin Abbas over um, an Akpabio. Akpabio and Tajudin Abbas, I prefer them. Okay. I am a bona fide member of All Progressives Congress, a the APC, and I am a loyal member to the party. Okay. So people. Oh, yeah, people who are members should not expect me not to be loyal to my party. Mm. Every member of the party is expected to subjugate their loyalty to the party. Okay. And this zoning arrangement, I can tell you that it's not even favoring my zone. I am from Northwest. 
Exactly. So the Northwest, we all know the capacity of the Northwest when it comes to Nigerian political terrain in Nigeria. We are the most populous in the country. Okay. And we, are the, we have the, the majority of the population in, in terms of registered voters in the country. We provide the, the largest vote in, in the country. We are decision makers when it comes to politics in Nigeria, the Northwest. Okay. But to my greatest surprise, this time around, it, one, is either we, we, we will go for the president or the vice president. Okay. But now, we don't have the president, we don't have the vice president, we don't have the senate president. So that's why you... And, <laughs> let me learn, please. Okay. And, we just have the speaker and the deputy speaker mm -hmm. that, is, that, that was zoned to the northwest. Okay. And still, some people, some aspirants from other zones are still overlapping to get this position because they felt that some of them felt that... Uh, I am the deputy speaker, maybe I am the prepared candidate, or I am the next person supposed to be the, the speaker of the house, or I've been in the uh, uh, assembly tree arm zone for a very long period of time, I have experience, I have this and that, I'm supposed to be the position, I have a lot of working experience. Okay, but then don't you think that um, beyond zoning arrangements, beyond um, tribes, beyond religion, there should also be the issue of capacity and capabilities mm -hmm. and experience sometimes comes into play when you talk about it's very paramount and experience must be considered too exactly whether we like it or not if you are talking about experience particularly let me go to my zones okay um the northwest my candidate honorable right honorable tajin abbas mm -hmm. out of all the aspirants nobody can rob his capacity, you nobody can compare his capacity with all of the aspirants in the nation in the tent in the tent assembly speakership priest. Okay. Go and check his record. It's there in the social media terrain domain. All over. Tajin Abbas in the ninth in the eighth assembly, he is the member with the third highest bill. Hmm. In the ninth assembly, he is the second okay. with the highest bills. And I am from Kaduna States. We know what Tadjin is capable of doing. We know what he's doing. He's just a silent achiever. But Tadjin Abbas, when competency matters, when capability and capacity matters, Tadjin Abbas is the best man for this job. Believe me. But if given the opportunity, which I am confident and optimistic, Tadjin will become the 10th Assembly Speaker. Okay, but then... Is but this time will reveal. Whether Tadjuddin is competent or not, we know Tadjuddin Abbas. All right, there was something you said earlier. You said um, the Northwest has contributed so much. Of course. So yes. is this about contribution of a particular region or it's about it is. who's really fit for the job? It is, see, it is about contribution and about someone that can deliver, okay. the competent candidates. Are you trying to say that working from the Northwest, we don't have a competent candidate, the mighty, the whole mighty Northwest? No, that's not what I said. Okay, what are you saying? I'm just asking a question. I said, would this be about the region that has okay. actually supported the most? Okay. Just like you said, you said some persons are feeling marginalized. So would you say because now this we are particular... Now the Northwest, we are feeling marginalized. Oh. Yes. What you we stated earlier, marginalized. you said the Northwest either that's why, that's goes right. for president, vice president... And now, because you said you didn't have the president, you didn't have the vice president. We don't have the you, Senate. You're going for the speaker. Yeah. That is, this is what was It simply zoomed. means that in the previous times, you've never been marginalized. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. But all over the zones, there is no zone in, the, in this country, in the sixth geopolitical zone that we have that has ever been marginalized before. It is okay. based on check and balance and equity. Okay. The leaders, our leaders are not stupid and they are not mad. No matter how little it is, they try to be justice. They are just. They are trying their best. All right. Let me quickly take a caller's opinion. Hello. Good morning. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. All right. Please, you have 60 seconds. If there are any other people to, to be annoyed from the north, it should be the north central. Okay. If you look to it now, 
there is nothing, no position was being pronounced concerning the North Infra. Now, there from the Northeast or the Northwest, as ever had, I mean, the speaker, they are still compl I mean, complaining. This is why the first call I made during the first uh, uh, segment uh, session of your program, I have to say that as this government, ha government has come to stay because they know they have beat and the cry of the masses. All right. Let them do the, the best they can. Like if this subsidy already has been removed. What we are going to earn from there, which is going to the post of just an individual that is coming to the judicial account now. All right. Let them come together, have a conference because of the issue of this marginalization. At least if we have one or how many states... So I need you to round up your thoughts. What is employment of a, a teenage? Most so many things will be tackled. All right. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. You heard him. Of course, yes. Your comments? Uh, it's very simple and clear. Um, if, I get his, if I get him right, he is saying that um, the North Central have nothing. Yes. Who told him? Maybe he is a poor student of history. Just so recently, the North, the North Central have the national chairman of the APC. Likewise, the North Central has the SGF of the nation. Yes. Why would he complain? Saying that maybe the North Central is marginalized or the North Central did, did, did not have. No, but in his words, he said have been. In government. Anyway, he said have been. Have been marginalized before. But no, he cannot tell me that in the previous administration, not just in the previous, if you go back far, that the North Central have been marginalized. Okay, so in a nutshell, okay. why Tajid in Abbas? And, you know, there's been a lot of stories about the Ninth Assembly being a rubber stamp. Okay. So if you're insisting or if you are supporting him as a candidate for the speakership, yeah. what's the assurance that it's not also going to be repeating the same thing that happened in the Ninth Assembly? The same tag that Nigerians have given to the Ninth Assembly as rubber stamp. You are talking about the Ninth Assembly as a whole? Yes. Um, anyway... As I told you earlier, I am confident, I'm confident and optimistic that Tajin Abbas will deliver beyond expectation. But it is only time that will reveal. But what happened in the Ninth Assembly? In fact, this is a new uh, government, a new government. In the Ninth Assembly, President Muhammad Buhari, the former president of Nigeria, was the president of Nigeria at that time. Today is Tunibu. So don't expect the system, the way Tunibu run, will run his government is the same way Buhari run his own before. Okay. And as we are seeing it, we voted for APC. And up to now, I never regret supporting being a member of APC, sacrificing a lot of things for APC. All right. Um, our time is fast spent. But in rounding up now, how will okay. Sajidin Abbas benefit Nigerians? How? Will Tajuddin Abbas benefit Nigerians? Uh, Nigerians benefited from Tajuddin already. Tajuddin Abbas has 78 bills in the Ninth Assembly. That he, uh, some he sponsored, some um, amendments, some uh, uh, sponsored an amendment. Okay, now I mean, let as me land, speaker. let me land, let me land, please. Okay. Tajuddin, out of the 36 states, including the FCT, that we have in Nigeria, 23 out of the 36 benefited from the bill he, he sponsored. Federal Medical Center, 23 states benefited. Okay. And not even that. There are a lot of bills that time will not allow me to mention here. True, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We Thank really you appreciate very much. you, Honorable Sunasi Abubakar. Thank you very much. The former Thanks aspirant for APC Zone Organizing Secretary Northwest. Thank you very much, Olamide. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks. All right, viewers, that's how we draw the curtains on today's show. I am Olamide Al-Hassan. I'll see you again tomorrow.